On a night when UCF had the attention of an entire football nation and a national TV audience to boot, it seems almost fitting that the Knights deliver a storybook finish, and that's exactly what happened Sunday night at Bright House Stadium. An inspiring come from behind win for the Knights over Marshall. The final score was 21 to 20. Hello again, UCF fans. Welcome to another edition of UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. He is the coach. I'm Pat Clark, and George, I have two words for you. Congratulations and wow. It that, really, it really that was. That was some victory. You know, I, I tell you, in all my years here, you know, that's the loudest I've heard the team after the game in the locker room. They, they were very, you know, happy and pleased. And, you know, they understood they made some mistakes during the game, would have liked to have them back. But, you know, anytime you get a win at home, national TV, I, I think it's great. And, and, again, it just, we kept – talking all week about a 60 minute game 60 minute game you got to play full 60 and you know no truer words were spoken when you know you, the six the 20 56 seconds actually when we came in and got the ball and started to get something done yeah as a point of reference for those of you who may not have seen the game and shame on you by the way uh, UCF trailed 20 to 7 as late as the eight minute mark of the fourth period they go in they score a touchdown then late in the game inexplicably recover a fumble and then with 23 seconds to go in the game uh, Brett Hodges finds Rocky Ross in the end zone and thus the the 21 to 20 victory uh, boy I, how do you gauge this in terms of morale and confidence and you know, it's probably overused the whole notion of this can turn a season around. Well, you didn't really need your season to get turned around. No. But a lot of confidence heading into not only the game against Texas, but three more important conference USA games, George. Exactly right. And, and that's the way we look at it. But, you know, I think the big thing, Pat, throughout the whole game was that, you know, and I listened very intently on that sideline. The kids never lost sight of what the goal was about that game was they had to get this done. It was a conference game. And, you know, I, I think we had some real warriors out there that, that played uh, tremendously as far as the team was concerned. And, you know, we would have liked to have a bunch of guys join them. But I think uh, we had two or three individuals I, I, I can't say enough about. Well, and we'll talk about those individuals as well as we roll on here. Some uh, great pictures of a great second half for UCF and an impressive 21-20 to 20 win. All of that straight ahead on UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. UCF Sports Today with head coach George O'Leary is brought to you by Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. Buy smart, be happy. Today's show is also presented in part by Bright House Networks. See how bright life can be. And Coca-Cola. Welcome to the Coke side of life. Sports is the exclusive worldwide marketer of UCF Athletics. Back everybody to UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary in the wake of UCF's most impressive come from behind 21 to 20 win on Sunday night over Marshall in Conference USA. And now George, your team has moved to three and two in the conference and your title hopes still very, very much alive. You're a game closer to becoming bowl eligible. Uh, now with a five and three record, I mean, so th things are going very well for you, right? They now. really are. I think you know, uh, we, we, you know, I think the players understand that each game is critical as far as the the division is concerned, and and uh, we have a very tough game with Texas coming up, and then three conference games that two at home. So uh, we're looking forward to the rest of the season. You mentioned the word tough, and on this day, when I think of tough, I think of. Brett. Brett Hodges wow. <laughs> because of what he did against Marshall. The, he was relentless. He continued to get hit, and he continued to get up uh, 23 of 45, a career-high 342 yards passing and a couple of touchdowns. I mean, he earned a star on his crown Sunday night. He really he? did. You know, they, they use the term warrior all the time, and he sure deserved it. Uh, you know, we were on the right hats, you know, as far as uh, blocking was concerned. We just got to sustain the blocks and finish, and that was the problem. It was a couple of ones there I thought we – 
could have easily seen a yellow flag there. But, you know, I, I thought he hung in there, delivered the ball, and what you want a guy with great poise and fieldmanship to get done. Plus, he, he took some pretty good shots, got up, and was taking the snap for the next down. Now, by your own admission, uh, this was not a perfect offensive performance, for the, uh, quite the opposite, for the longest time. And, and the numbers, the final numbers, might be a bit deceiving. 401 yards of offense is a very, very impressive offensive performance, and you did most of that through the air. It's a matter of fact that in your previous four victories, when you had won, this UCF team had averaged 192 yards on the ground. It had 59 against Marshall, still found a way to win the game. It really did, and I think the key was that, we, you know, and that's what was so upsetting on the sideline. We had some guys running free in the secondary there, and, and we didn't have enough time to get it to them, which I, I think is something that, you know, when you're calling plays and trying to get the right situation there, you know, it, it's tough. You know, the pencil runs dry a little bit yeah. because you – you're trying to worry about protection first and make sure we got enough people out in the route to take care of things. But I thought Brett did a tremendous job. I, I think the two players that really, to me, stood out in the game was him on offense and, and uh, Bruce Miller on defense. Uh, I thought they both played very well. And more on Bruce in a moment, but off we go now to some first half highlights. An 8:15 kick. It was a nationally televised game on ESPN. It was indeed the only football game in town on Sunday night, and here's Josh Robinson, your freshman, with a pick for the second time in as many games. He now has three on the season, Joe. Really does. I, I think he has to know where he's at when he catches it. Just take a knee. Okay. Yeah. UCF down 7 to nothing. This is their scoring drive in the first uh, half. Rocky Ross, who had a big night with a 15-yard reception, uh, getting a UCF first down, sustaining a drive. This ultimately would be an eight-play 72-yard scoring drive. Here's Jonathan Davis. We talked about him last week, George, and this is this is a go-getter. I really like him as a running back. You know, he's in for two plays, and I think he had 16 yards rushing. So I mean, we got to utilize him more. And here ultimately is the scoring play. This came on a on a, a fourth and one on a four-yard touchdown catch, pitch and catch from Brett Hodges to Kamar Aiken, who also had a great uh, evening. Uh, Brett showing no favorites on Sunday night. So it's 17 to seven at the half. George, you and I have talked before where you get the ball down into the red zone and you, uh, uh, again, on the four yard line, but you had a fourth down. Your philosophy long has been, let's get the points. Let's right. take the points. So what went into your decision making not to kick the field goal at that point and instead go for the six? You know, and in fact, we, I think we had six fourth down plays, Pat, and uh, we made five of them. But, you mm. know, my thought was that we were struggling a little bit on offense as far as getting some things done. And I wanted to, you know, get down there and get seven. I didn't think three was going to get it done. And, you know, and uh, the kids took the challenge. But I was trying to send a message to our football team. You know, we want touchdowns. And I think sometimes when you kick field goals and – fourth and two, fourth and one, you know, you, you send in another message. So I think the message sent was that, hey, let's get it done. Down 10 at halftime. What was the mood in the locker room and what did you say to your fellows? Well, I think both staffs made their adjustments and went after it. And then all, all I did was get them together and tell me, fellas, there's nothing different than they're out there. They're doing the same offense, same defense we worked against. And I think the big thing we got to do is offensively sustain blocks, finish our blocks, all right? And we have people running free. Uh, both in the run game and the pass game. We just got to need time to get it to them. And defensively, uh, you know, we had given up uh, big pass plays with coverage. And then we got to play the ball better. That was the biggest problem I saw defensively in the game. Off to the second half now we go. And boy, some exciting pictures coming your way. As mentioned, UCF trailing 17 7. It was 20 to 7. Now in the fourth period. And here is the scoring drive that would uh, bring UCF to within a touchdown. Ricky Kay with a 16 yard catch up the gut. That kicks off the drive. And here's Rocky with a 21 yard catch. And this was a fourth and long play, George, that would ultimately continue to drive, get it down to about the three yard line. Right. It was fourth and nine. And my thought with the time left in the game, we had to do that. Well, it's clear that Brent Harvey was not going to be. Uh, taken down before he got to the uh, end zone here on this play. That's the touchdown, a seven-play, 43-yard drive, UCF back in business. Now, this is after the UCF fumble recovery very late. Kamar Aiken with a huge 19-yard catch and almost gets into the end zone, ruled down at the one-yard line, George. Yeah, it was a good call watching it. And then here is the ultimate game-winning score. Rocky Ross is left open in the end zone. Brett Hodges finds him. Uh, 21 to 20 after the extra point. This comes with 23 seconds to go in the game, and then this would ultimately be the final play of the game. Almost fittingly, it's Bruce Miller 
uh, who would get the sack of the quarterback, and UCF prevails by that 21-20. Uh, great win and a great play by offense and defense. And, you know, yeah, I was proud of them and happy for them. I think it was a very ecstatic locker room, and, you know, and, and rightly so. I think they put a lot of work in, and, you know, it's a very tightly knit group, good chemistry, and uh, you know, as I said earlier, it's the loudest I've heard the locker room as far as excitement uh, in my years here. Uh, coming into the game, George, your defense was 11th in the nation against the rush and number one in Conference USA. You had the second leading rusher in the nation coming in here in the form of Darius Marshall, and he had by far his worst game of the season. Your defense held him to just 80 yards. You have to be very proud of that. I really was. I thought we did a good job there. I think the biggest problem was they had 232 yards throwing the ball, uh, Marshall did, but four of them came uh, 156 yards on four passes. We gave up too many big yards plays that, with coverage. We got to play the ball better, and obviously it's something we need to work on. Is that the only bugaboo, really, that you saw out of the second really, half or the uh, entire game? I think it was big plays on defense that we gave up there. You know, it's more frustrating for the coordinator because, you know, they got coverage on. We just got to make plays on the ball. And, and the other thing was defensively we had eight penalties on defense, which is not something that we do, and they're very good about that. But we... We had a couple, three late hits, you know, questionable in some, but uh, then some offsides and, and interference calls. And, and those things hurt you. They change field position. You can't do that. So we've addressed that. Up next for UCF, a date uh, in Austin against second-ranked Texas. Later on in the program, we'll talk about that game. But when we come back, you'll be fascinated to know what goes on behind the scenes to make things click in the UCF football program. Laundry, meals, road trips. We're going to cover it all when we come back on UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. Stay right there. The Knights Kids Club, presented by Chick-fil-A, is an exciting new club just for kids 8th grade and under. Call 407-823-6165 or log on to UCFAthletics.com to join now. An innovative anthrax vaccine, promising research on cancer, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, and advanced laser developments. In their search for new answers and better solutions, UCF professors are awarded millions of dollars in research funding each year. Needless to say, we're all quite proud of them. UCF stands for opportunity. Down to the game will end. Hand off. Actually, Anderson keeps it, and he doesn't get it. No, nah, he gets fumble. It. Fumble. He fumbled the ball. There's no call yet. Now they say yeah. UCF ball with 2:12 to go. He fumbled the ball. You can understand Mark Daniels' excitement on that call because it appeared that UCF was going to run out of time. Right. And that Marshall was going to run out the clock. Just as a point of reference here, Marshall had the ball just a couple of minutes to go. Uh, they had a, a second and six, I want to say, offsides up. penalty. So now at second and one, they get the first down, and then they can effectively run out the clock and take a 20 to 14 win home to Huntington. So that fumble was incredible. Caused fumble by Bruce Miller, right. recovered by Josh. And let's talk a little bit about Bruce because you mentioned him earlier in the program. What a game he had. Ten tackles, uh, three of those tackles for loss, two and a half sacks. He has displaced his own teammate, Jarvis yeah. Gathers, for the, the, the lead in sacks and tackles for loss in Conference USA. What yeah. a game he had and what it, a season he's had. He really him. has. I tell you, he works hard at the game, practices the way he plays. And, you know, I think he's contagious. Everybody around him plays better because of his great second effort. But, you know, he's like every good player. They're great second effort players. They, they're whatever it is. Like, he's on some of the special teams. And he was just out there for like a fourth, you know, I think a seven or eight play series. And, you know, he wouldn't come off special. He, uh, uh, I went on. He wouldn't take himself off that field. Uh, that's what kind of guys you like that you want to go after. But he forced the strip, you know, and uh, great recovery and gave us a chance to come and win the game. Well, uh, rumor has it that he stood on the sidelines after he failed on the fourth and out. The only time he failed on a fourth down late in the football game and they got their ball back. He was saying to teammates, maybe even to you, 
I'm going to strip that ball from somebody and I'm going to get that ball back for us. Is that yeah. legend or does that actually happen? He may have said it. I was probably busy with something else. But Taya, we talk all the time about CPR, club, punch, and rip. And those are stripping techniques. And we stood him up and you saw, you saw Bruce Miller come in and actually pull on the elbow and the ball comes out. And, you know, it was a great situation for us and a great opportunity for our offense to go down and win. In that game. fourth period uprising, is it true that the players were on each other in a good way on the sideline? Oh, yeah. They, uh, peer, nothing better than peer pressure. I think coaches can, can get excited and all that, but I think peer pressure is outstanding when one player to another player because they're all in it together and they know that. One of the Blackberry seeds in your wisdom to the whole season has been putting the complete game together, first half and second half. Your numbers in the second half remain extremely good, George. You have yeah. outscored your opponents in the second half 124 to 66 this year. That's fairly impressive. Well, I think we got a chance to make some big plays in the second half defensively, change the field position a little bit. But I think, you know, we got to continue to get better consistency in all phases. All right. Shifting gears here for a moment. You as a head coach know what you have to do. You've got a lot on your mind during the course, not only of the season, but year-round as well. So you have to have a great support staff. Right. I'm not, not talking just about the trainers, but everyone around you has to do their job, and you have people who do their jobs. I think a lot of UCF fans don't realize what goes in <laughs> logistically All to right. making this program work. Well, if you don't know, take a look. Uh, it's a lot of planning up front in order to run a football team. Uh, it's a lot of scheduling ahead. Normally, we're a few weeks ahead of schedule as far as practice schedules, what time breakfast and meals are. Uh, it's just a lot of staying ahead of everything so nothing surprises you when it comes up. Every decision we make, you know, there's probably about 150 people involved with the football team. So every decision you make is going to affect all of them in some way. When we start preseason camp, we end up having to take quite a bit of time to get everything ready. We'll start the process basically at the 1st of June. And from the 1st of June on until the 1st of August, we're working on preparing for the team to come in because we not only worry about the athletes, but we have the student managers. We also have some trainers we deal with. We also have the video department. We have the strength department. We have the coaches to deal with. So it takes a lot of preparation to get ready for that. We uh, spend a lot of time in the laundry room washing this, uh, the equipment up. It takes uh, quite a bit of time, especially on game day, to get all the extra stains out of it. Each one of them has a game jersey for home and away, and then they have their game pants, which we just keep laundering. They also have their practice gear, which is another set of pants. And they have a gold jersey, white jersey, or a black jersey. And it goes through a wash cycle of about 62, sec 62 minutes. And from that point, we go through another wash cycle of about 30 during the drying time. And that's just for uniforms. But we have practice gear that we go through. We're very fortunate to have four good washing machines and dryers. So it moves it through pretty quick for laundry and practice there. During the preseason, uh, we feed the guys three times a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then we give them a snack on the way back to the dorm at night. Uh, over that course of time, you know, it's probably a two and a half week time period, we're spending over $100,000 on food just feeding the team. Uh, during the season, an average away game, you're probably looking at about $80,000 between hotels, food, transportation, and everything that goes into that. Every day, both ankles, every single person on the team, mandatory, have to be taped. So um, you're talking tens of thousands of um, rolls of tape um, and dollars that go into, again, the preventive measures that we take to try to inhibit an injury from happening or prohibit an injury from happening. We're fortunate enough here at UCF that we have an accredited program in athletic training for undergraduate students. So we also have students coming over that are doing internships um, underneath us that help us take care of the athletes as well. So there'll be anywhere from 8 to 12 of them on the practice field at any given time too. So there's, you know, on any given day at practice, there's 12 to 16 um, bodies that are only there to look at athletes and watch their demeanor and look up for news. Coach is pretty demanding with the program, but everyone here knows what they need to do, and he expects people to do that without him asking. And that's what he surrounded himself with, and I think we have a good group of people here to do it. Be sure to visit Buffalo Wild Wings in Waterford Lakes every Thursday night from 7 to 8 p.m. during the season to hear the George O'Leary Radio Call-In Show.
Fans, here are your run for Ronald totals for the game. UCF had 401 yards of offense and three touchdowns for a total donation to the Ronald McDonald House of $701. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Welcome back, everybody, to UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary looking ahead to Texas this coming Saturday out in Austin. Before we do that, let's, uh, I want to get your comments on that piece that ran in our last segment. Your, your son, Marty, who's an attractive young man, <laughs> did, 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 a, did a great job. And it. it's just fascinating and mind-boggling all of the details that go into making this a, a smoothly operating machine. Well, football's big business. Yeah. It really is. There's a lot of people involved in the background that do an outstanding job. And I'm just happy we can get them on the show so people can see who they are and what's being done. Okay, so now we've got Texas coming up on Saturday. It's an 11 o'clock kick central time, so it's a noon kick. Uh, the game is going to be televised nationally on Fox Sports. Texas is the second ranked team in the nation. They're up from number three. They're second in the BCS. They're undefeated. They go to Oklahoma State and route the Cowboys. Uh, talk about great operating machines, Texas is a good football team. Well, they really are. I, I've seen tape on them and uh, outstanding athletes, uh, great speed, great depth at the positions. And, you know, they great tradition of football there. And, uh, you know, we'll have our work cut out for us. And, you know, but it's the next game on the schedule. And uh, we're anxious to get down there and see what, see what it's about. Well, we talked on our last program that while you might have had a little bit of it, it's always a great advantage when you can play on national TV as you did Sunday night against Marshall. But the, the downside to that is that it does make it a short week. How does the week change, George, in preparation for a game? Because at, at the time we're taping, it's Monday. It's actually Tuesday in, in your mind, isn't it? Well, it is. And, I, you know, the players right now are, are into Monday-type schedule as far as tape on Texas and very limited tape on the Marshall game because we're getting right into the Texas game because we're a day short as far as the players are concerned. And... And I went through that with them the, this morning as far as at the meeting, as far as what we have to get done to catch up. And uh, they, you know, hopefully we can get things done Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and have a Friday morning practice and fly out to Texas. you got a good feeling about your team right now, don't you? I can just, I can see it, I, I can feel it in I our do. conversation. You know, I think, Pat, they're, they're, there's, a, there's a great passion for each other, which, you know, I... That's hard to get done with a football team. There's always, because I tell you, Division I athletes, for the most part, are, are very selfish athletes in a lot of ways. And I think to care about what your fellow teammates are doing, which I was really appreciative of, offense was up, rooting the defense on, defense the offense, and both of them doing with special teams. So I was real pleased with that. That's, that's people that care, a team that cares, and I'm very happy about that. Good luck on Saturday, okay? Thank you. And we'll see you folks next time on UCF Sports Today. With George UCF Sports Today with head coach George O'Leary has been brought to you by Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. Today's show was also presented in part by Budweiser, the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Open up a world of taste. By the energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Syntex Homes. For a better way to a better home, visit Syntex.com.